नमस्कार फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू दिस फ्रेश एपिसोड ऑफ अवर चैनल सो यू सुन वी होप दैट यू आर कीपिंग वेल एंड कीपिंग सेफ ड्यूरिंग दिस सुनामी ऑफ द सेकेंड वेव दैट द कंट्री एंड द वर्ल्ड इज विटनेसिंग and we hope that you are utilizing sanitizers properly wearing mask to ensure the safety of your and your loved ones at home and not just home also of other members in the society having said that uh, we always keep telling you that it is our endeavor through this channel to bring to you the most brilliant of minds from the legal fraternity and from other walks of life in the society and today uh, i am very happy to introduce you a very special guest uh, mr l ravi chandan sir who is a designated senior advocate uh, from uh, high court of uh, Andhra Pradesh he practices both in the high court of Andhra and Telangana amongst other high courts and has a great uh, four dec- at least four decades of practice under his belt and i'm so happy sir to have you on the program welcome uh, uh, for sparing your valuable time for our channel my pleasure jay all the way my pleasure so before we start a series of our question and answers uh, the first question uh, out of uh, custom which we always ask our guests on board is please tell us about your uh, uh, the initial journey from your birth to your school education and what was that moment in your life which propelled the idea of pursuing legal education and becoming a lawyer uh well uh my very ordinary school i went to a good school uh, st patrick's in secunderabad and uh, you know convent education gives you that uh, initial start up um uh, i think most of my friends when we were doing my class 2 wanted to become doctors and i did imagine uh, myself also for a very very short while uh my father was a doctor and i lived with a lot of uh, doctor friends so uh maybe it came by uh, some definition that maybe i'll do it but uh, very very soon i realized that's not my fault i couldn't stand uh, a drop of blood anywhere so i knew that was not going to be my calling uh i therefore decided to do arts instead of sciences uh, much to the disapproval of uh, my family which thought uh the I mean, my father was a doctor my sister was a, uh, uh one of my sisters was a leading uh, psychologist by then my other sister was a geneticist so they did not look very highly at the arts but i had taken a call that i am going to do uh, arts and i did my graduation now very interestingly when i did my graduation in 75 those years it was very clear line those uh, left of center or those who were slightly marginally in that area prefer to go to a place like jnu to do their post graduation on the right of centers went to the iims and they really were academically oriented i told my father that i would not go to an iim i'm working so you know where i was i had applied to the jnu and luckily got a seat there also i skipped all that and my father said i'm willing to certify you as mad when i chose to do law in chennai over uh, doing uh, ma economics or ma international studies in the united in uh, jnu in fact uh, i still remember i shared room with uh, baru sanjay the author now the former uh, advisor to the uh, former secretary to the prime minister manmohan uh so they all thought that i was making the biggest blunder in my career chosen very consciously that i would become a lawyer by the time i was uh, i had graduated i knew that um, i was doing very well as a public speaker as a debater so i said maybe word craft is a very vital phenomenon these very loosely wrong ideas about who an ideal lawyer is and therefore i chose to become a lawyer right right sir uh, so there's a very fantastic journey that uh, you know besides uh, your family opposition uh, uh, you know you you uh, uh, chose the path that you wanted to tread and i think it's very interesting especially for the younger generation and a lot of our audience are young lawyers upcoming lawyers so people who want to pursue law as a career and i think that's very important to choose uh, the the field that you want to pursue throughout your life and which gives you happiness i think that that is very important so sir let me let me take you to the 70s decade when you were pursuing law as a as a career and you you told us that you have gone to chennai to uh, uh, to pursue your llb mm. and so if you can just shed uh, some light how were those formative years uh, of of being a law student uh, was there any concept oh. of internship during those days and and uh, uh, and 
uh, what what type of uh, you know advantages you had in the 70s or the disadvantage that you had in the 70s compared to the legal well, education that we see today oh i would say that legal education today has taken a quantum leap is no doubt on that at all uh, i don't think we can compare uh, legal education of the 70s you can only contrast legal education of the 70s with in fact you know i there was a, a bit of drama even when i got into law school uh, i had gone for my law interview at the madras law college and uh, i had no mark sheet i had nothing except a newspaper which had my name saying that i had got a rank in graduation so when i went in for the interview there were thousands and thousands of people coming into the interview i really don't know how they interviewed so many people and what they found out and i was told by the uh, dean of the university that uh, only because you are a rank holder we are holding back your admission otherwise we would have rejected it straight away for not producing your mark sheet produce your mark sheet within an n amount of some time produced it and that's how i got a seat in law we were a huge batch you know we had about some seven to eight sections of 80 or 90 students each so approximately count your numbers 80 to uh, 100 into 8 800 900 or maybe even 1000 students in the madras law college where i did my law from now what was interesting though was uh most of us uh did not require to spend too much of time there the law was a very different ball game and i think we all in college took law very very light very very light from a rank holder in graduation to a 48 49% uh, mark sheet in law told the story of how likely law college was taken because there may have been a few people there too who worked uh, very very seriously and got big marks but by and large i would confess that law was almost a semi holiday to most of us and we didn't uh, spend a lot of time but i must tell you the day i you know our results came sometime in october or something but by july i joined the office of my senior and the first thing i told him was that i had no clue i told him in so many words that i had no clue of what was cpc what was crpc i had just done my law and i was there when senior who went on to become the advocate general of the state went to trip so he did say what that it was a uh, what you've learned in college is anyway very very different from what you're going to learn on the street of law so i think that was a big time uh, reassurance that uh, all was not wasted and the journey actually begins after you leave the college and go to law so very well put uh, if i may just ask sir because you have now just started your legal journey if you can tell uh, us uh, something about the initial years of being a junior lawyer in a chamber how was life back then and and why i asked this question is so many times the young lawyers uh, you know online ask me this question and i think you are the right person to answer this is what should a young lawyer focus on when you are starting your career out should they join a senior chamber uh, should they focus on drafting work should they only uh, focus on research to ably assist a senior lawyer uh, what should be the right path to tread when you have just freshly graduated from your experience and from the experience of, uh, uh, of let me let me there are multiple responses to this sir firstly let me tell you i was like extremely lucky arguably probably i am the only guy i know of who argued the case in the high court on the day he was enrolled to the bar most of us wait for a few months a few years really because you argue for a court it so happened that uh, the case that i was asked to argue was to come up before his lordship justice aladi kupuswami he was now then the number 2 judge of the high court and next senior who by then had huge practice had gone into the court and asked for a pass over so the judge said you are asking for a pass over who's going to argue your case so then my junior will come in there after lunch because i was not enrolled by then so he asked for a pass over in the morning in the afternoon i got enrolled around 1 o'clock at 2:30 i was before the bench arguing a rent control crp which was discussed and i thought it was a wonderful day so not this it was a not nine time because my senior only wanted me to gain an experience and he knew anyway the revision was going so i was very fortunate to be in a wonderful office which had all kinds of work their civil their criminal their drapes their corporate all now everybody 
may not find a senior of that kind. So what happens is, do I do research? Do I do drafting? No life doesn't get compartmentalized like that. Uh, I think we have to do a bit of all. Technically, today's lawyers, again, they're built of far superior quality. They come from law institutes, five years. So they have done their basics on drafting. They have done their basics on uh, research. What are the research tools? You know, when we were students or when we were lawyers for a very long time, we had those huge quinquennial digests from which we would search for a judgment. Today, it is not that you slip in a word and you get an SSU online or a Manupatra online or what have you. So I think research also is definitely easy. Choice you have to make is do you want to practice law as a advocate or do you want to become a solicitor? Do you want to be in a firm and do the packing work? Now, this is a call you have to take. And um, this call you will take on a variety of factors. Obviously, solicitors get very well paid edition. So if you are in need and you can't wait, then that's the route to take. But if you want to be a real good lawyer, the going is going to be tough. There's no doubt about that. You will be a very zealous mistress. That is one thing you will learn. And your days are going to be long. You're going to be engaging. You're going to be challenging. So they're going to be very uh, low for you emotionally very often. You will see that a lot of people of your age, your class, have taken a march over you and have gone ahead. While you're still lagging behind is how you would look in a lace. But you must understand that this is a profession which is a marathon. And the slow runners win the marathons. So it's a personal choice. Chief Justice uh, told me, uh, Justice Yogeshwar Dayal, he had once told me, Ravi, this profession is only for people who are second generation lawyers or people who have a lot of family wealth or tremendous amount of patience. So, and if I you can have all of them, Sone uh, I think, sir, very nicely put. And if I'm not mistaken, sir, you also are a first generation lawyer because you said uh, you came yes, from family doctors. First and and uh, if, if I may ask, sir, what, what has worked in your favor, sir? Was it patience? Was it family? Was it was it a mix of good luck? Luck. 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 Right. Luck and uh, a wonderful office. And a wonderful office. Right. Sir, uh, two two questions which, which spring out of your uh, your narrative uh, you, uh, that you just uh, uh, you know shared with us. One, uh, we, I think, are one of those unique countries which still offers both type of law courses now, uh, right after plus two, uh, where we have a, a new term called law school, which offers a five-year law course. And then the traditional three-year uh, law college, which one can pursue after graduation. Uh, do, do you think we as a country still need to have uh, both these courses running parallelly, or has the time come where we can do away with one? That's my first question, sir. Merrier is always a nice choice. Merrier is always a nice choice. The reason why the five-year law course must be uh, continued with is that is where all the investment is. That is where the best minds are. That's where the best training is. That is where the best infrastructure is. So that has to continue. Then why the three plus three? That is because a lot of people, when they get into grad school, are not mature enough to look at... Uh, career, plan your career very well. You must understand a lot of lawyers come from um, socio-economic backgrounds, which uh, do not entail uh, a kind of exposure that will help to becoming a good lawyer. And these people sometimes turn out to be brilliant lawyers at a later point in time after following the three-year course. But I really don't see the need to break off one and take up the other. Maybe you can say, if you've graduated, you don't have to do three years law, do two years law, because if you've had social sciences as your grad, fair enough. So that's how I would say. Right. Uh, so the other, other question that uh, that I have for you is uh, that traditionally speaking, uh, litigation, not, not so much the law firm or the in-house culture, is treated to be a, a gestation, uh, uh, the period for gestation is very, very long. 
Uh, and I think from your time of practice till my time of practice, uh, this is my 14th year into the profession, still very young at the bar. Uh, I still realize that uh, there is a, the progress is very slow. It's, it's gradual, it's, it's sure, but it's very slow. So uh, compared to a law firm culture or in-house culture, and, and uh, because we have friends, we have peers, we have, we have uh, family members who have uh, you know, studied law with us or you know, senior or junior to us, uh, sometimes I'm asked this question, and I must uh, put this question to you uh, to perhaps get the right answer, that why have things not fast forwarded in the, in the field uh, or in the arena of, uh, uh, for a litigating a lawyer or for a lawyer who wants to practice litigation? What, what has the held the profession? Obvious. The, reason, the reasons are obvious. The reasons are obvious. You must understand that firms, solicitor firms, are manned by industrial litigation or uh, commercial litigation, while uh, the lawyer litigation, the civil criminal, the tough road. Uh, if you're asking me, why does it take longer to go through the shortcut of the bridge instead of the national highway? The answer lies that the national highway has better infrastructure. It's better design. It's more wealth has gone into its build-up and therefore the drive is slow. While if you're going through a village, you're going through other areas, what happens is you see infrastructure. You learn geography. You see human life. You experience life in its truth, life in its essence. So which kind of a tourist do you want to be? Yes, this route is tougher. Yes, this route is going to take you longer. The weight is going to be there. That is why I told you what Yogeshwar Dayal had said, that uh, you must be one of those three people. You must either be very rich or you must come from a family of lawyers, in which case, the way it doesn't happen as much as in other cases. Very uh, so well expensive. The, the gestation for a practicing lawyer will be more than for one who comes through a law firm. And this primarily is because law firms are on a different socio economic orbit when compared to the struggling lawyer. But the, at the end of the day, the struggling lawyer's story is far more satisfying. I think it's a wonderful analogy that you've drawn the path. Uh, you know, sometimes say the road less taken, you have to go through villages. And, and by, by undertaking that path, we always learn something new. We pick something, uh, you know, on a journey uh, to, uh, towards uh, perhaps a greater uh, uh, professional goal, if I, if I may say so. So my next question to you again is about your uh, professional journey. Uh, now that uh, you have joined an eminent senior who later went on to become the Advocate General, uh, as, as you mentioned, uh, after how many years sir, did you decide to take the plunge into independent practice? And how was the transition uh, from uh, being a junior in a chamber to uh, go independent? I don't know. It almost in retrospect looks uh, seamless. Uh, it started off uh, when I became a special government leader with the government. That was sometime in 1988 or 89, I think it was. When I became a government leader, that I, I, I put in uh, about 10 years of standing. In fact, very interestingly, it was the first time in the state a special post was created, a special government leader to assist the advocate general. And moved to another advocate general. And at the time when people were hoping to get the post, I got a call from the office of the advocate general saying, Ravi, would you please come and join me as special government leader? So I was there for just about a year plus, and then the advocate general resigned, and I too resigned with him. And uh, I came back to my parent office, my new. In my parent office, my advantage was, while I was assisting my senior, his son-in-law and I started branching off on our own. We started doing work together. We started doing our own cases. We ensured we spent time on both. You know, when work came on our table, we did not see whether it was office work or my work. Right. Or my partner's work. So that's how it worked. 
everything was seamless. I don't think Mohan and I, but my colleague also went on to be communication general. Neither of us ever said, this is your work, this is my work, this is office work. It was just seamless and we were fine with it. I think so. Uh, in, in fact, a very uh, good uh, uh, take that I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I'm going to take from from what, what just narrated. Because what I see today uh, with young lawyers, and I, I don't know if you have seen in your workplace or in your office with your juniors, is sometimes uh, uh, they they treat uh, the chamber also as a law firm, saying this is my work and I'm not going to do it. I think some things have uh, uh, seen a transition over the years. Uh, because uh, you know, young lawyers, I don't know whether they get bogged down by work or do they want to draw a definite boundary uh, within the area of work that they're doing, that these are the files that I'm going to do. I'm already so so much burdened with work. There is a there's a latent impression that sometimes I, I get from uh, certain chamber juniors. And and I think that's a wrong approach. I think the approach that you just mentioned is the right approach that when you're working with friends, no, with James, colleagues. James, actually, you know what? I don't think so. I'll tell you why. So These people who say I'm stuck with a file or two and I'm working on it, are putting a lot more into the file than we did in our case. Banzo Junior puts today, a typical junior in my office also, when I say, you take care of this, you do this. That what I get back from them is far more complete than it could have been when I was a junior. Maybe. So I, I would compliment them for saying, uh, I'm doing this completely, let me finish it. They shouldn't be very choosy, but then it's a personal call. I don't know if I can be judgmental about it because, you know, it all, uh, a variety of factors go into it. A variety of factors go into it. For example, you know, uh, when I was a junior in court, I was told not to read books other than law. Today, I keep telling my colleagues, please read books other than me. So that's a paradigm shift. And uh, I think this is because, uh, you know, especially students who come out from law schools and law institutes in the country are so well informed that and they have their, they are quite clear that while they will work like a dog or work like a horse, they're also sure that they need their personal time. And I think this balance is extremely important to make a complete human. And I have no qualms with young lawyers who say, no, sir, I, I don't think I can do this matter because I'm full. They're being honest. I think it's a very wonderful, wonderfully put that one must also understand the plight of young lawyers who are associated with us and who are working with us. Because at the end of the day, I think it's, it's teamwork at play. Because, you know, if you put too much pressure or burden on somebody, a matter or a client is bound to suffer. I think, I think it's a very eloquently put. My next question, sir, is uh, in, in your journey uh, uh, spanning more than four, uh, four decades, uh, you have covered so many high courts, sir. Please, please uh, share your experiences uh, about how tough or how easy was it to juggle between different high courts when uh, you're sworn with work. The first stage for any litigating lawyer is one, and let me ask this question first, sir, because in fact, young lawyers keep asking this question, uh, that once you are going independent, how easy or how difficult is it to build a clientele? Because that, that's the first and foremost question which, which pops up in mind. And how do you consistently build a, uh, build a clientele? Why I'm asking you, sir, this, is this. Because as a barrister or as a practicing lawyer, uh, a client may come to you at any stage uh, uh, in, a, in a case. They may come to you when the case is just starting out. It may come to you when it has to be argued for appeal. It may come to you when a cross-examination has to happen or when a fi final argument needs to be argued. Uh, so so how, how do you uh, uh, figure out, uh, 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 you know, uh, one, the transition when you're going independent and to uh, deftly uh, you know, handle these uh, different needs of clients. Then second, how to build a uh, good practice going on with a, with a robust clientele. And third, how to juggle between different different courts that you have to go to uh, to argue your matters. Personal agent life doesn't come with a user manual. Neither does our profession. There is no herb. Uh, and this is not an Olympics where you swim in a in a channel that's given to you. You have to swim the rough sea. You'll find your own velocity. You'll find your own strength once you're in the water. I refuse to believe that there is a mantra to it, and it is my mantra. Both of them, I don't. I also believe that I've struggled. I've struggled and struggled a lot. 
I have struggled out twin counts. One lack of economics in the sense that I didn't have money. I remember with the Bali that uh, till a day before I didn't have enough money to go and buy a few fireworks for my five-year-old son. Uh, I also suffered in the sense, I saw a lot of extremely mediocre people, if I may be polite, less than mediocre people making big money at a time when I was not making any money. This uh, mismatch between talent and success happens with our profession like it happens probably in cinema and in many other things. You must begin to believe in yourself. That's a very important right. You begin to believe in yourself. Please prepare. I don't, know. I don't think I, I consciously prepare. I get painting, I hope people. Every time I had an opportunity, I did what I thought was my best. Is there an ideal way of building clientele? There are various ways people say party with them, network with them, socialize with them. I've not been a party goer, I haven't socialized. Uh, I've, uh, you know, I remember even now, people used to fun when uh, weekend meant for me going to a film and writing film reviews or writing articles in newspapers. Which was looked down upon to me. It was uh, my passion. And I said, I'm not giving up my passion because to me, law was a part of my life. It was not my everything in life because acceptance, success, money, uh, position, all these were not the end all. To me, being being me was very important. And in the process of being me, if there are part of the race that I have lost, it's been very conscious. It's not an accident. I decide what yes I have. Have I felt very bad that I've not got them? No. Because I've realized that the product I am today is a result. I wanted. I wanted to write, I wanted to sing, I wanted to see cinema, I wanted to cook, I wanted to do gardening, I wanted to do dress designing, I don't know all this more. And I'm happy that, and I wanted to be a voracious reader and tonight, even now, I don't go to bed without reading a general book. Any fiction, just finished Morris Beck two days ago. I'm reading James Boyle now. Uh, so I have no regrets that I'm a late starter. I have no regrets that I've not made tons and tons of money. I'm happy with where I am. To answer therefore, how do you build your clientele? It depends on your mental makeup and what you want. There is no book. There is no formula. One thing you hardly need to tell the younger generation. They'll teach us three lessons or two on how to be focused. Extremely focused. Extremely well educated generation. Their problem is they have too much of competition in the game. And therefore, they need to be constantly running faster and faster to be where they are. I think uh, very wonderfully put the, the challenges uh, with the younger generation and I, I completely agree with you on that because uh, when, when I'm interacting with young interns and uh, young lawyers who have just graduated uh, and then uh, I was reading somewhere, you know, that, that we almost know everything about everything in, in today's day and age, but we know very little about ourselves and it's so important to sometimes internalize, just sit and then get to know the person that, uh, that you are and I think that's a very valid point sir, that you raised out there for all uh, the young listeners here. My next question to you, sir, is uh, that uh, you have such uh, great practice and you have covered so many high courts and other courts uh, and tribunals in the country. How do you so manage your time? Because because with such busy practice, when you have to uh, cover so many courts, uh, how does that work? Right now, it's easy because all of it is virtual, so it's easy. So sometimes I am tempted to say I love virtual courts, but then again, I tell myself the day I say virtual over real courts, 
I am choosing the highway over the village route, so I don't want it in the long run. Uh, having said that, um, sometimes, you know, okay, let me tell you, uh, except in Andhra, in most other high courts, there are just one, two, three appearances. So uh, I would ensure that it was on a Monday or Friday and ensure that on that day I didn't have enough work in these sports or a period in time that worked. Now, when Andhra and Hyderabad Lengana happened, you know, both the courts were very kind to senior lawyers because they knew that they were going through this new phase where one high court had divided itself and people had to travel to another high court. And therefore, what I did for myself is I said, three days, one high court, two days, one high court. If I say three days, Telangana, two days, Andhra, that's how I work. Depending on whether the work was a little more or less, we adjusted it at the end. Had a wonderful team of lawyers uh, who were engaging me, who always had the confidence that, you know, even in a little bit of time, I could uh, take up a case. I have been, um, I'm very happy to say this, that after I land up at the Vijayabhata airport in the night uh, or in the morning, from the airport to the court, I had two lawyers sitting behind and uh, instructing me on two different cases and I was ready to go and argue the case. What a wonderful team of lawyers. And as I told you, the advantage that we seniors have today, a whole set of brilliant young lawyers who are so good that they can tell you everything like this. You just have to go like a parrot repeatedly. Exactly. I think. No, sir, I think wonderfully put uh, how to do time management. In fact, uh, the follow-up question that I have for you is about the digitization phase that we are undergoing, uh, though by default because of uh, the, the COVID wave which hit us last year. Uh, and uh, amongst uh, the legal fraternity, obviously there is there is a uh, division of opinion. Uh, there, there is a, a faction of our fraternity which believes that uh, you know the court should fully function and when resume physical hearings as and possible. The second uh, uh, faction is of the point of view that, okay, it's not bad, it's how things should be moving forward considering how the world is progressing with digitization supreme court of the high courts in the country uh, and I, I think gujarat high court has also in fact started live streaming uh, of the proceedings as, as you rightly said it's easy to uh, sit at the convenience of your chamber or your home and uh, appear virtually uh, without wasting too much of time i think that is a crucial aspect so sir, how do you how do you think the industry is going to change going forward do you think a hybrid is the right model for physical hearing firstly i firstly i don't think india is prepared right uh, we don't have the bandwidth and infrastructurally today the country is not prepared yet. Half the times courts and judges are not able to hear us or we are not able to hear them. I know it's going to take a lot of time to build a web culture. Like, you know, very often even today we are in a court forgetting to mute and we are talking to somebody else. And the judge has to tell us, please mute. I remember Justice Sumi Ajilu telling some our lawyer in Andhra the other day, I don't want a conducted tour of your kitchen and your drawing room and your bathroom. Fine. Also understand culturally, uh, WWW came to India school. Also understand that a lot of us come from a rural background or not very urban lifestyles. You know, today uh, the smartphone has reached every corner of the village and a little kid knows how to operate a smartphone faster than anybody else does. But that is fun. It's not at work. At work, there's a pattern. There's a learning. There's a learning curve. And this curve must necessarily think with the structural curve that the system throws at you. So think will require a lot more than a knee-jerk scenario by which we are working today. Today we are tolerant to a lot of shortcomings because of the scenario. But remove the scenario. In normal circumstances, if I'm just sitting somewhere and arguing the case out of thin air, judges are not going to be as tolerant. The, an entire generation of lawyers and judges have learned the finer techniques of law in human interaction. You are robbing a good lawyer of this by the new platform. It will mean, but even if it is inevitable, it will have to be gradual. I think uh, so the, the progress, point is, sorry. 
progress is inevitable. We have to catch up globally. But how far we do it, how we do it, is a matter. So I think you raised a very valid point of human interaction, uh, and and that is something uh, as a as a matter of constant complaint I keep hearing from young lawyers and especially students who are in law school because the internships have now become virtual by and large because of the pandemic. Also, uh, most of the law interns, students as an interns. You know, I have interns who I have not seen. Yes, sir. And then, what what do you feel about that, sir? Because because uh, what what is the difference that you feel between an actual internship, a physical internship, and a virtual internship? Do do you think people are more to learn when they when they're physically? Firstly, there is no replacement to human interaction. You can't the pleasure of a voyeurist and the pleasure of a tour. Said that on a lighter, crass way. I would like to add that uh, when things are so mechanical that everything is picture perfect. Even in a virtual world like my Amazon shopping, but I like to go to a mall rather than Amazon shop. My son prefers Amazon to a mall, so it's a mindset. I think it's coming to terms uh, with the lifestyle you're used to and peer pleasures and peer pleasures. These two factors together will decide the course. I think. You're very wonderfully put, sir. Uh, in in fact. Uh... My my follow up question is because most of these interns and young lawyers are not permitted even to appear virtually or observe proceedings. Uh, so I think uh, the the whole pandemic has taken a lot of learning away from them. Uh, my uh, question, sir, that comes out of it is uh, many many times these uh, young people ask me that if you become a judge or if you are in a law firm, there are a lot of programs either in judicial academy or in law firms. We have program called continuing legal education where people or young lawyers are trained uh, how to interact with clients, develop soft skill, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But uh there are very limited or uh, i would say almost uh, uh, you know negligent or literally no, no avenues like this in litigation for young lawyers to be given continuing legal education so how can we sir develop that area for litigating lawyers who are literally either dependent on a chamber and the people who do not have a chamber who are trying to find their footing uh, in 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 a, in a uh, uh, challenging profession uh, like litigation how do we how do we uh, train those uh, young lawyers obviously it's going to be multi pronged and if you look at your question uh you started off with telling me how uh, interns are not allowed into the virtual court virtual court it answers my earlier question that we don't have enough to plan with that's why they're not being allowed so the virtual court has its problem there that is why what i say is law schools will have to step in for example in the first uh, wave of the covid I did a course on communication skills for Hyderabad University, a law school. The vice chancellor asked me whether I would be willing to do an additional course, not something which is straightforward in the curriculum. So I taught them uh, how do you your communication skills as a lawyer, drafting skills as a lawyer. Okay. I think a lot of these uh, in his pockets of concerns that you mentioned. can become independent and individual training courses as parallel paralegal certificates or additional courses that law schools teach and this can be virtual or this can be depending on where you are what you are how it goes that can pan out in any which way what cannot be taught in life will be will have to be learned in the book and what is not there in the book will have to be learned in like system academics you have to me so to be if you are deprived of something in real life go to the book go to the college let the college step it up and say today because all of you are not able to go to the court and watch i'll do something for you like a court i'll do arrange a couple of moots or i will ask a judge whether i can shoot one day and show it to my we have to uh, what is resource management or uh, what is resource up in the resource is managing new challenges and the new challenge today is the curtain that is being drawn on you therefore there's it through other technologies as well so some wonderful suggestions there uh, just uh, coming towards the end of the program uh, just few more questions uh, 
not taking too much of your time. Uh, sir, uh, many times it's asked of me, uh, and I don't know how how to sometimes answer this question is, uh, young lawyers say, sir, should we be a journalist or should we be a specialist? So, for example, when you're starting your career out, people are confused whether to pursue civil litigation, commercial litigation, criminal litigation, uh, start from trial court or straight away join uh, an appellate court. So, sir, what would be your advice on that? Again, no single advice. I am a journalist. I've seen some amazing specialists. Arvind Tathar is a specialist. Right? Now, uh, question whether you should go from the lower court or should you stick to a high court, my answer is you must go all over. Mr. Subhash already once told us, from the revenue division officer right up to the Supreme Court, you must be able to argue. I have tried that, except I don't go to the Supreme Court. They're too wise and too very, very wise men, so I don't go there. I go to all the other courts. And uh, I believe that uh, original side experience uh, teaches you to ask the right questions at the appellate stage. It teaches you how to look at a document, how to look at evidence, how to look at a pleading after you've seen what is happening in the lower court, the original side is an imperative. Because I had the advantage again, you know, I, I went to an office which had both original side work and appellate side work, and I had a choice. One day I could go here, one day I could go there, one day I could learn here, one day I could learn there. Can't happen with everybody. I understand that problem. In which case, you'll have to do original first and then do appellate. Because otherwise, when you do appellate and go to original, you get a very vertical sense of learning. It is very unhealthy. So I'd rather have you go up the ladder than come down. So first, the original court, I believe, original side work must be known. Because today, you know, suppose you become a corporate lawyer or a political lawyer, suppose you're doing election petitions, you need to know evidence law. You need to know how to cross-examine a witness. And these are things you learn on a lesser charge at less implication in a civil court or in a criminal court. And I do also know whether you have the luxury of that kind of choice from two factors. How wise are you to make that choice at the beginning of your career? Therefore, you have to learn everything. Two, how do you know which kind of client is going to come to you? Therefore, you have to be prepared in all branches of the You have to be prepared law unless you are an inheritor. If you are an inheritor, then it's a different matter. And even if you are an inheritor, my argument would be in what you have and acquire something more. So become double. Yes, I think uh, wonderfully put uh, and thank you so much again for being on the show and before we conclude the show sir, we always request our guests uh, to please uh, give some closing comments to our young audience and when I say young I not, not just only mean the youth I mean people who are young at heart and young in mind and are tuned to our channel so any closing comments for them uh, I think it was Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru in his letter to Indira Gandhi I think in his copy of India of Glimser Rose he says I hate to give it us uh, having said that, I'll share a couple of my thoughts. I think we must have an unsaturated habitat for reading. Read law if you have, but say 70% of your time reading law, 50% reading other books. A lawyer who does not know life. A lawyer who does not have a historic perspective, a lawyer who's not sociologically conscious, is no law. He's incomplete. Law is beyond the dead word that we are not wordsmiths. We are midwives to justice. If you understand this, you will realize that we need to see life in its drama, in its poetry, in its cinema, in its mythology. Mr. Rama Subramanian recently spoke on justice and Ramayana, justice and Mahabharata. Ram and justice, we need to understand that these are all customary law. How does it practice? This all comes only through general reading. Please read. 
please read is a theory I keep pleading with all of us. Two, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Life is not just that we create stand for being a good lawyer, being a nice house, big car, large property, farmhouse, judge, big home. Keep a happy man. Keep a satisfied soul. And for that, you'll have to be a person, not just a person. Have fun. Work hard, both having fun and working hard are not antagonistic. They work together. The day we realize this, I think we are fine. Thank you so much, sir. Thank I think you for these, so uh, much for hearing me. Nuggets. If I have arrogated to myself this uh, vertical, blame it on Jen for giving me the opportunity. Thank you very much. I think it's very, I feel honored that uh, somebody is calling a man of uh, mediocre success, my mediocre achievement to come and speak to an entire group. So, so we are, we are grateful for having you on this platform and uh, as we close, we always appeal to our uh, viewers that if you like our channel, please uh, like it, share it, subscribe it so that people uh, can benefit from it uh, from the small... Do, will do. And so on this will wonderful do. note, I, I wish you all the very best, sir. Wish you success and health and prosperity going forward and to all your loved ones and to your office staff and uh, to, uh, to the near and dear ones. On this lovely note, sir. See you very soon. And uh, let me also wish your endeavor great success. I think you are doing what lots of law schools should be doing. Keep it up. Thank you. Thank Way you to so go. Bye-bye.